All right, folks, welcome to another episode of 35 All Grip. Today's guest, Marcella Delgado. <laughs> thanks for being here. Yeah, thanks for having me. I got a short intro here for you, so we'll just go uh, right into it. So, originally from California, Marcella came into the downhill scene honing her skills on some iconic roads. She made the move to the Asheville bubble a few years back and has been riding a tidal wave of progression from free riding to getting on the podium at high profile races. Marcel has become a key component to the scene here and has been making the rounds to other big ticket downhill destinations too, including Hawaii and Vancouver. And we are fortunate to have her here. Wow. That was very nice of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of wanted to start with, um, California, your mm -hmm. your upbringing into downhill. Yeah. What about it? Well, I saw pictures of you skating GMR. Yeah. Years back. Did you live by GMR or what? I was nowhere near GMR. Where are you from? Um, I'm from a really shitty little town called Altadena. Um, and then we moved to Echo Park. Los Angeles, which is like five minutes from downtown LA. And uh, I would get up at three or four in the morning and I would make the first train called the Gold Line uh, from Chinatown all the way to the San Gabriel Mountains, which is would drop me off at a Starbucks, which was the last station like at the time. I think it went like one more station after that. They've built like nine stations since, but um, yeah, I'd get dropped off at like six o'clock in the morning, Sabrina Riffenberg or Grayson Bagellini would usually be the ones who would pick me up and then we'd make a 7 a.m. session, which is like Dawn Patrol at GMR, six or 7 a.m. Well, so you're taking like public transportation to just meet up. I mean, yeah, I was like 16. That's badass. Yeah. That's how, pretty awesome. How did you even find out about downhill? Like what? What? Like. Um. <laughs> so when my parents split up, I lived with my dad in my like late teen years. And he lived in this. He still lives there, actually. He lives in this apartment on Echo Park Boulevard, which is. It's like two miles long from like sunset all the way to the top and it's like a it's just like a straight hill bomb and every now and then I would hear like shoo, 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 woo, woo, and like people were screaming at like 1 a.m. in the morning and I was missing this for months and I'd like run outside and be like what the fuck is going on? Like it would wake me up or I'd be like video gaming and I'd be like, what's happening out there? And one day I caught them and I like, I'm like 15 or 16 at the time. And I like see these skateboarders going down and I like ran up to the top of the hill before I could miss them. And uh, I get to the top, which is only like four blocks away from my house. And there's like 15 downhill skaters like at the top of this hill. And Amanda Powell, I think, was there the night that I met her. Rachel might have been there. I've known Rachel for like seven years. Um, and I had my jet skateboard that I got from like a tattoo shop that they gave me for free because my dad knew this like tattoo artist. And I'd never bombed a hill, but I had a helmet on. And I, I was like, can I skate with you guys? And they were like, um sure like I'm like 16 and they're like okay like yeah and I like made it down maybe a hundred feet got wheel bite supermaned down the hill like this for like the next 200 feet and covered myself in road rash at like 2 a.m and I like walk back to the top of the hill and everyone's like are you okay and I'm like yeah like this sucks, but that was, like, really cool, 
And then Arian Chamismani, uh, at the time he had a car, walked me down to his car, which was parked right in front of my fucking house. And he like opened up his trunk and he had like a box of skate gear. And he just like gave me this box of skate gear with like Paris trucks and like some wheels that were mismatched, but like also full sets and like bushings and like just like a random bunch of crap. Um, David Petrie gave me my first set of downhill gloves that night. Um, and then Arian also gave me a loaded fat tail that I still have. And yeah, that's how I found downhill. That is so cool. I oh, am. Yeah. That is so cool. <laughs> you just happened to be living on a street that was getting sessioned. <laughs> it was pure luck. And this was one of like 20 places that they would keep in like a rotating fashion which is why i didn't see them consistently or hear them consistently because i didn't know anything about this so and then i just i finally was like i ran up there and talked to all these like 20 and 30 and 40 year olds did you know at the time like who they were like you just like i've never heard a downhill before (laughs) this one moment i didn't know that you could go fast on a longboard didn't know that you could do slides at the time i had just been like skating and like going to school and like does like my commute but I didn't know that downhill existed he sent me like all these videos and I like learned about downhill that night wow that's so cool yeah. there's something about like it seems like everyone like the first hill they bomb they just get covered in road rash and it's like that's the point right there where like I'm either gonna do this or I'm out yeah and and I was covered in ro- and my dad like woke up he was like where have you been and I'm like I have to tell you something. I have found this sport and there is nothing that you can do to stop me. And I'm going to do this. And I'm like covered in road rash. He's half asleep. And he's like, all right, clean yourself up, go to bed. And I'm like, all right. And he went back to bed. He tells everyone the story. He's like, yeah, she just told me that she was going to do it one day. And I just knew that I couldn't stop her. So that's like what happened. That's so rad. (laughs) That's so. That's an awesome piece of information right there. I'm pretty lucky. It's pure luck. How how soon from like just doing like the straight hill bomb stuff to like going to like bigger roads? Like, what was your progression curve looking like? Not great. I mean, I skated garages for like six months to a year only. Didn't know that you could like go to roads and hills like didn't i was like learning how to slide like on like a straight hill that was like one block long um probably a year or a year and a half after that they were like i was like talking about gmr and i like heard about gmr and i was like okay like i'm gonna go to gmr and they're like okay like be careful like here's some people that you can meet up with and they like put me in touch with ryan farmer he's the first one who picked me up took me to the top of the hill at like 10 p.m. or something crazy like because I had like gotten to the train (laughs) station super late and and he I'd been like texting him and he picked me up and he was like yeah like we're gonna camp tonight and all of this and I like get there we camp and then yeah like it was like a year and a half until I figured out that I could skate like Payuma and GMR were the first two roads that I skated Mount Washington was another one that's so rad. Um, actually, this might be this might be a good time to get into a guest question. Um, Ooh. I got a guest question from uh, your buddy David. Here goes. Uh-oh. Hey, Dan. Hey, Marky Delgie. I uh, hope the interview is going well. I just wanted to uh, check in and was hoping that you could tell us the story of your friends um, skating in the national park. Uh, it might involve a trooper or some shit uh i was also wondering how many slides there were on gmr okay thanks uh bye (laughs) (sighs) um okay so there's this you ever heard of like highway 39 i'm i'm pretty clueless with the california stuff i know like tuna that's bad that's okay there's you're not missing much um there's this big road 
called Highway 39, or we called it Spliff Highway um, because of Tim Dell's favorite, favorite, famous spliffs that he would roll. Um, but uh, there was this road that you could skate in the campsite like at the top of this huge highway that I think is like 5,000 feet in the air. And uh, yeah, we used to just like go camp. And then before we would skate this huge highway, we would like skate this road going out from the campsite to the main road, which was covered in potholes, terrible pavement. Like it's some of the worst pavement on I've ever skated. And then we would, like, hit that and then drop into this perfectly smooth, beautiful, scenic road for the next, like, three miles. Um, I don't know about a state trooper. I don't know what he's talking about with that. But hmm. there's no slides on GMR. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sliding on GMR, you're probably doing a bad job and you're taking people out. Oh, my gosh. I wanted to, I wanted to rewind, rewind back to these... Uh... Tim Tim Spliffs, what makes these spliffs so famous? They're just really spicy. <laughs> They're not fifty one fifty. They taste like seventy thirty for the most part. Seventy thirty ratio? So yeah. Pretty heavy on the brown. Yeah. They're really good though. I don't know. I don't know if he still smokes spliffs, to be honest. Yeah. But GMR is thirty five all grip. It's good we got that cleared up. <laughs> The world needed to know, Dan. I saw you on the a podium picture at Barrett Junction from like a while ago. Yeah, which was pretty cool. Yeah. What what's uh what's that road like? And that was that like one of your first races, or when did you kind of get into events? My first and only race, other than uh, Ohio. Seriously? Yes. Wow. You're kind of batting a thousand for getting on the boat. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Um, Barrett Junction, also dog shit pavement. It's actually the worst road you'll ever skate. It, it is, looks awful. It is so much fun. Everyone should skate that road. If you just put on the biggest wheels and leathers, you roll over all of these gigantic cracks and you don't roll over potholes. You like have to avoid those. But And you don't. I don't even know if you really slide Barrett Junction either. It's just like, it's like gravel. It's fucking insane. And that road is slow, but when you're riding in a pack or racing people down like the worst pavement on the planet, uh, planet, it's uh, really, really fun. Maybe I'll make it out there one day. God, it's so far away from where we live. Like if I'm no. s for some reason out there, maybe it'll happen. No, that's how I feel about California. I'm never going back unless I'm like have a very very specific reason like tepe or something a huge waste of money don't go to california <laughs> sorry i take that back i love california <laughs> yeah you might get you might get some haters for that one but that's okay yeah, it doesn't matter that's okay I don't, yeah so what's up i i heard you uh went to like an art high school i wanted to kind of touch base on your yeah. on young marcella yeah um i went to three high schools um, but the high school that I graduated from was, a this is a public performing arts high school that you had to apply to get into. And I went there for my 11th and 12th grade year. Like more like specialized. Yeah. They had, stuff? they had a, a music program, a dance program, an arts program and a theater program. And I was in the music program. Okay. And you couldn't really, you couldn't, you weren't really allowed to do all of them you were really they like frowned upon that for some reason but you were allowed to like you, i was like in music so what um what instruments are we talking here um richard or, richard knows or this. instrument i should say uh alto sax clarinet and i was also in choir they like really wanted you to like do a lot and then i took a guitar class as well while i was in 11th and 12th grade really bad at guitar though really bad at it but you got to go to school and like play guitar yeah that's pretty badass it was pretty cool but my teacher was a pee in his head <laughs> he was awful i don't remember what his name was but he was awful yeah you still are those is that a woodwind 
Are we talk? Is that what a clarinet is? Uh-huh. The woodwinds? Yeah. Are you, are you still messing around in the? Yeah. With the woodwinds. I haven't opened up my clarinet in a really long time, uh, but I played my saxophone recently, and I also just bought a, a like an electric keyboard piano for home. Um, now that I've moved into a new space, and it feels like I can kind of do more for myself so i'm gonna start trying to relearn piano as well that's badass i hope so yeah right on well um you you have like your i guess side um i don't know what you'd call it page or i don't know if you'd call it a company shuffled photos you're a you're a photographer yeah of sorts when did you when did you get into photography and what got you into it? Um, I guess it really just started out like I was just taking pictures of like my family and like uh, I'm a recovering Christian, born and raised. Parents, my my mom really loved Jesus uh, when I was a kid, um, so I would take pictures at like church and stuff and like pictures of church and it was just like fun for me and then. Uh, a family friend gave me my first like Nikon like really like I would I grew up poor I'm still poor so like our family friend like had all this money and he like saw that I was doing that and he gave me a camera and um yeah when I was like really bad at skateboarding like there were things like I very cautious skateboarder and so like if I was at a session and I like wasn't comfortable I would just like take pictures of everyone and did it through school and sports photography really like football and all that fucking boring crap but yeah I don't know I just really like taking pictures of people when I wasn't doing anything or I was like uncomfortable at a session because of the learning curve so I really enjoyed doing that on the side and now I'm much better at skateboarding than like five years ago so I'm doing it a lot less unfortunately because I love skating, so it's, like, hard to pick sometimes. Yeah, I mean, you want to be on the hills, you know? Yeah, it's so fun. So. It's everything. But yeah. What what brought you out here? Like, how... What was your journey coming from California to Asheville? Um... I told you that was good. <laughs> I was trying, I had to burp, but then I was trying not to burp, but then it was, just got stuck in there. That's um, fine. You can burp on, on this show. It might come later. I, it's it's in there somewhere. But um, my uh, partner at the time lived in Chapel Hill. And when I was like 18 or 19, I like moved here with like no plans and then just like started living with him and his parents and... Uh, lived in Chapel Hill for two years and then I like kind of knew about North Carolina downhill and APB you know like five years ago I've been here for five years but I didn't really know much I just knew that everyone was in Asheville and in Boone so I used to make day trips to Boone and to Asheville as like a visitor from Chapel Hill which is a four-hour drive one way so I'd get here at like seven o'clock in the morning meet up with like Mikey was one of the first people I ever met up with and yeah yeah my partner at the time lived in North Carolina and then I like moved to Asheville with with that yeah I was wondering because I would like I didn't know you at the time but I would see like like who's Marcella does she live here is she like visiting or something like I I didn't meet you until like I guess kind of when you moved here. um. Yeah, pretty much. Because for two years, I was like doing day trips whenever I had like a weekend. Because the next day, I would just like not go to work because I was exhausted. But I would never sleep in anyone's house because I was like, didn't really know anyone. I was just kind of like trying to skate with people, you know. I heard you might have got some speeding tickets or something. Yeah. Um. All of my speeding tickets are driving from Chapel Hill to come and skate here. <laughs> and I got three in one year. Oh, my gosh. Or is it three in one year or four in two years? Um, and then the last speeding ticket I ever got was moving here 
the day I moved to Asheville. Impressive. Awful. Fuck I-40 West. <laughs> Awful highway. There's cops everywhere. Like Oh, big time. Yeah. That's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awful. That's pretty awesome. So you've been here for some years? Yeah. I've been no? in Asheville for three now. North Carolina for five. That's crazy to think about. That is that is crazy. You've been here for like eight. Yeah. That's also crazy. I'm... I, I don't know where the time has gone. Blink. But yeah, in it's a blink. Gone. It's gone. For real. Like Yeah, I think about it all the time. What's your uh kind of stance on breaking into neighborhoods, going into high profile spots? Are you uh are you on your gated neighborhood grind these days or what's what's no, that looking like? Not anymore. <laughs> um No, I mean when I first got here, I was like, really, like, let's go, like, ruin my car. I don't care. Like, I'm putting my time in, you know, I'm trying to take people places. And then uh, recently, David and I were on our on our bullshit, and we were going to LSD and uh, skating there way too often. Like, it, we were being really stupid. And, uh, yeah, one day we got caught. And this lady, like, knew that we were lying from the get-go. And she, like, saw us driving down behind her after she had, like, let us go. And we had, like, lied to her face and told her that we weren't skateboarders. And she blocks us in. And she gets out of her truck. And she's like, you guys didn't have to lie to me. And she's, like, on the phone with the cops. And we're blocked in on LSD. And David and I are fucking freaking out we're freaking out and uh we're like about to drive off the side of the road that's how bad we're trying to get out of here because this is like the day that like somebody goes to jail and he's like sorry david um he's like uh, he's like ma'am this is an emergency we have to go and she's like she's like don't don't drive off the road you're not gonna make it and he's like looking at me and he's like am i gonna make it and i'm like dude no like if you drive right now like the car is going off the side of the road like you do not have it and she's like i'll move and we're like what and she's like i'll move just know that the cops are coming but i'll move i don't want you guys to get hurt and she let us go and then i checked my voicemail like three days later and i had a voicemail from buncombe county sheriff and they have my license plate my name <sighs> awful I'm officially on someone's shit list, so just so everyone knows, this is why I haven't been taking my car in the neighborhoods, and nobody should be doing that to their car, and especially if you live here, but, like, nobody should be putting their, putting themselves through that, like, get a rental car, mm -hmm. get a rental car, pay the $30 with five people, get a rental car. The block is hot. <sighs> Steaming, dude. Yeah, they Awful. they certainly know about our shenanigans at this point. And most people are freaking over it. Yeah, I mean I understand why they're over it. Like we're we're breaking in. It's unsafe. It's <clears throat> There it is. I had to let that one out cuz I had tried to I held in the other one. Um yeah, they know. They know and it's getting worse and we're blowing it day by day. But it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Asheville's blown. Oh, totally blown. It's been blown for a while, actually. Yeah. It has been, but we love it. Yeah. You want to hear that voicemail? Yeah, let's play that voicemail. <laughs> Just so you guys know, this is what happens when you uh, use your own car to break into neighborhoods. Yeah. Um, let's play, well, we'll just play some of it because uh, it's like a minute and 30 long. Almost, yeah. Hello, Mr. Gago or Marcella. Um, my name is Deputy Conrad with the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office. Um, the Sheriff's Office number is going to be 828 250 6670. The reason why I'm calling is we had complaints of people on longboards going down a neighborhood um, located off of, I believe it's Hisga Highway. 
um, at the end of a long road where there's a subdivision. Um, LSD. <laughs> the neighborhood is putting up cameras to stop the skateboarders um, from driving down that stretch of road. So um, busted. Due to the it's cameras, over. I got the tag that came back to your vehicle um, that had somebody riding a skateboard behind it. Um, not true, but he has been on so, camera. I'm going to advise you guys not to go up there. Um, otherwise, there could be charges pressed for trespassing. Um, we don't want to do that. We understand you guys want to have fun. Um, don't do it up in the neighborhood. Do it somewhere where it's safe. Somewhere yeah. That's that's pretty much the whole. It's not place safe now. anywhere. It's not safe anywhere. <laughs> yeah, just it's not safe anywhere. What we're doing, but, but we'll try. Try our damnedest. So yeah, that was my uh, that was my little wow. That was my little slap on the wrist, and they were. I'm, I'm honestly really lucky because that's, in my opinion, as bad as it gets. Like I don't I don't know anyone that's gotten a call from the sheriff's office. I don't know either. That's you're truly on a list. I'm now doing bad yeah we down bad wasn't worth it but um that's okay live and learn i guess i got lucky i saw you and david went to vancouver yeah what what's the what was what was cooking out there was that just a trip to just go hang out gaycation <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> okay sorry um Gay is good. Gay is tight, like buttholes. <laughs> Just for anyone who's confused, uh, gay, is, gay is a really good thing. Um, no, I mean we actually went right after all of the events, <laughs> and we didn't. We did barely any actual downhill skating. Um, we met up with some people and skated like some classic roads, but um, we like stayed. David's crazy for this one. He got us an Airbnb at the bottom of the BPs. Okay. And we skated the BPs like all day long at like bus runs. Um, we were just like city folk. We like skated around the city. Vancouver is one of the coolest cities for pedestrians. And I'm like not well traveled, but like this is one of the coolest things I've ever experienced. Like they have whole lanes for like bike lanes both traffic like each direction and uh they had like this whole park dedicated that was like an island that was going around i forgot what it was called it was like the coastal ride or something and it goes around this entire island and the entire time you're skating along the water along the beach along the coast and for like three miles i think like the whole city is just like dedicated to pedestrian living and public transportation we didn't rent a car we took public transportation everywhere it was fucking awesome that's badass it was really amazing we hitchhiked some runs met some strangers um some lady gave us 50 bucks one day um yeah this this lady it <laughs> was you crazy. think you're, you're y'all like we're down bad yeah she did actually she was like so we're like sitting on the corner on the sidewalk like eating ice cream um just chilling and this drunk ass lady like comes up she's dressed she looks like an angel by the way she's like dressed in all white gucci everything and she had like a leather wallet and like a leather purse and she just looked like this angel and she was super drunk and she's like asking us what our names were and what we were doing. And she's like petting David and telling him that he looks like a, this is in public, like it was fine. <laughs> but she's like, you look like this celebrity or whatever. And she's, and then she's like, she's like, okay, well, have a great day. And then David looks at me and he's like, this is our moment. This is where we get money from a stranger. And I'm like yeah it is so we like watch her stumble into this gas station and she like she like comes back around and she like finds us and then she was like so what are you guys she like what are you guys doing and we're like oh we don't really have any plans we're just like traveling around we don't have much money but we're like here from the states and she was like uh, hold on one moment and she goes back into the gas station takes her like 10 minutes she didn't buy anything i don't know what she was doing in there other than getting us cash she comes back out and she was like she's like 
hands David the money and she was like, go get some really nice dinner. And we're like, really? She's like, yeah, like you guys are young, like you guys should live, like go get some dinner. And we were like, what's your name? And she's like, doesn't matter. And just left, sauntered away. It was <laughs> fucking insane. And then we like went to this crazy restaurant um, and like got free dinner. And like both of our pasta dishes were like $25 and we like don't drink really. We just like got water, which always makes people mad. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we get dirty looks all the time for that. Um, but we got like two of these ridiculous pasta dishes and the whole thing was paid for by this strange lady. Shout out to that lady. Drunk That's... in the middle of the day. It was on the streets by the beach. It was amazing. She's living her best life. She's happy. Get <laughs> day drunk, people. I say that. I don't, I don't really drink, but... How was the BPs? Really fun. Really fun. Not as many slides as I thought. Like, I I brought, like, my knee pads, and I was, like, prepared to, like, go fast, because, like, the videos look insane, but that's because, you know, people, like, Dex are full tucking with, like, spotters and shit, and I had never been, um, and, you know, I brought, like, three sets of wheels and all of this, and then uh, it was, like, really chill and really fun, and uh, skating it without spotters is definitely a little scary. We, uh... I think one of the last times we skated it also, we had taken a bunch of mushrooms, which is legal in Vancouver. And we bought like this mushroom drink thing that we ended up like not even drinking because it was like our second to last day. And we're like, okay, we have to fly in two days. But yeah, we like caught the very last like midnight bus and skated it in the dark high as fuck on mushrooms. (laughs) And it was really, really scary. Like I'm can't see at night either but we had like a full moon too the whole thing was insane it was couldn't see couldn't see for shit but yeah i was doing pendies in front of david oh yeah yeah i was terrified Hell i couldn't yeah. see anything <laughs> and david's like it's okay baby and i'm like ah, this is crazy pendy in front of your friends yeah <laughs> it'll you guys can hug afterwards just like on the pavement that sounds awesome it was I, amazing i'd like to get out there eventually um if you do don't rent a car and like go for like the events or don't go for the events vancouver is one of those places you can go and just like have fun we just like city slashed all day long hung out in the parks skated the bps uh occasionally met up with some of the other skaters a couple days uh we're there for two weeks and our days were full every day it was awesome (laughs) I heard you made, there might have been like a K-Rhyme sighting or something. Yeah. Is that, is that, is this on this trip? Yeah. Um, we were in the city and we were going to get Euros and, which they have crazy good Euros there. Like they've got the lamb on the, on the spit, whatever the hell that thing is. Like cut it off. I mean, Vancouver has amazing food and amazing coffee and like your dollar is worth more there. So you're like having a slightly better time because you're not as worried, but we're city slash and we're going to get lunch and I guess Kevin was like walking around with his with his partner and just didn't say anything to us. Um didn't <laughs> <laughs> he just like he saw us and then somebody like told I don't even know how we found out that Kevin saw Oh, Dex was like in a group chat or something and Kevin had said that he saw David and I or something and like saw us both skating together and like looked at and like saw us just like didn't I guess he was busy I don't know like didn't yell out or anything and uh we were skating with no helmets on um so the whole thing was pretty funny (laughs) didn't see him didn't even know that he saw us we like found out through Dex or someone like through some group chat thing (laughs) pretty ridiculous honestly that's incredible yeah we didn't see Kevin Kevin saw us though just like Skating around. <laughs> it's not a choice. This is. You're you're allowed to burp. On I know. Here. I know. I know. It's just uh, it's kind of gross. But let's see where else we're at. Um. Well, you got on the podium at Soldiers. You said that was the only other race you've ever done. Yeah. Um. How was? How was Soldiers? What did you think about 
Bainbridge. Intense. Soldiers is so intense. And since living in Asheville where you're like, no one's trying hard. No one's going fast. Everyone's just doing a hundred slides down Town Mountain, having the best time on the planet. Uh, Soldiers is the opposite. I hadn't tried to go over 50 in like seven years. Like I haven't tried that in a really long time. And racing against like Cat and finally knowing Ashley all these years, finally getting to race against Ashley, like everything was really awesome like ohio's dope everyone should go to soldiers all the time 100 percent agree amazing event i'm so bummed i've been trying to go for like five years now i just like work and life and shit and i finally had the opportunity to go like i had enough time off from work and i and i went and i'm never not missing i'm never missing that event ever again you were looking good i saw you thanks i was posted up in the combo Right yeah. at the start. You were looking dialed. That was that was my strong suit. Yeah. Sliding. No. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, let's go. I was like, I got the slides. The the tucking part though is was uh took me two days to warm up to that. It was really, really scary going over those humps. Yeah. For, for a while there. But I think I full tucked it at the last on race day, but still it was just like yeah, it was very scary. How'd you place? Third. Fourth? Fourth? Third? Third. Yeah, I think I got you on video going through the finish line. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty close behind Ashley, but Cat fucking smoked us. I mean, there's a video that Lucas got in the chicane of all of us coming through, and Cat zooms by, and like three seconds later, me and Ashley come by. I mean, she was way ahead of us. What did the finals heat look like? Like, how were you, how were you all stacked up going into the slide? Um... I think Kat and I pushed out together, maybe, and Ashley was kind of behind. And I was, I have, I had like a really good push on on most of the girls, like except for Kat and and Tessa has a good push. But um, Ashley just got me every time in the tuck, cause she just she just does. She's just better. She's better at that shit, and she. Uh, Ashley and I came through that corner and then I looked behind me and I'm like, nope, well, drafting my ass. Like she didn't even need to draft me. Like she just, she just passed me and I I thought I had it, but, uh, yeah, I mean, Kat was like miles ahead of us, honestly. It was pretty crazy. Yeah. She was kind of gapped out front there. She's, she's fast and she's really, really good at skating. Was the Tessa crash? What happened with her? Like, yeah, someone, oh yeah, Tessa was... Yeah, I don't remember what happened to Tessa, but she like ate shit. I felt oh, so man. I felt so bad. I heard her crash was kind of bad, but I think she just like I think she just like locked up and psyched herself out. And uh Yeah, that's right. She was in our she was in our heat. I have a terrible memory. Don't do drugs. Um Yeah, I have a terrible memory. Yeah, Tessa was in that with us. I actually remember now, Tessa was in that with us, and I think that she was like she might have been like in front of us for a little bit and then she like crashed herself out or something and i think i remember like passing her i don't know if that was finals or like semis but yeah she like crashed yeah well you got some points to go on the <laughs> to be on the team are, are you trying to pursue any of that this is a touchy subject no um why not uh for one i'm poor I don't, I don't have the funds to do that. And I've started to realize through my very, very short experience with racing as an adult that my priorities are so much different. Like if somebody gave me a huge stack of cash, I'd go and race for sure. But because that's at no, at no cost to me. Mm -hmm. But if I'm going to spend my money, I'm going to spend it on shit I want to do like Vancouver and like fun stuff because like racing racing's dope people should race if they want to race but i know that i'm just gonna have more fun like for me on like regular ass skate trips like traveling Mm -hmm. the world not like worrying if i'm gonna podium and like putting a bunch of money and effort into it you know like i'm gonna put money and effort into something that's like good for my soul and shit yeah i respect that it's uh it's, it's cool that you're pulling up to to race 
you know, at least <laughs> though, or if it's, if it's feasible, I'm yeah. going to go do it. But if it's like going to, you know, like this whole Philippines thing, you know, USA downhill messaged me and they're like, you're our, you're our alternate. No one can make it. Can you make it? We have no funds for you, but you're our alternate. Can you make it? Nobody from USA women's is going to this. And I'm like, nah, man, I'm going to Puerto Rico. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a fifth of the price. Like, It's pretty hilarious that those two events are on the same weekend. I mean, they're on different parts of the globe, but I'm like, did y'all look at a calendar? I don't know if they looked at a calendar. I don't make the rules, man. I just avoid them, I guess. I'm just, I'm like, even if I hadn't bought flights to Puerto Rico a week before they had messaged me, <clears throat> um... I still wouldn't be spending $1,500 on a flight to the Philippines. Like, my whole trip to Puerto Rico will probably cost, and I'll be there for, you know, like two and a half weeks, less than $1,500. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Racing just has no personal gain for me, unfortunately, with when, when, when being poor. It's like, meh. I could, like, go have fun somewhere else. Yeah, That's absolutely. Just me, yeah. I mean, it's stressful, too, especially, you know, and not only that, I mean, you need, Yeah. I mean, even with the flights, you need to bring, like, so many wheels. Everything you own. Everything. No. Yeah, um, yeah like, I can't, I, and then, yeah, you know, it's not just the flight to get there. It's the cost of the, of the actual event, and then it's, you know, you spend a thousand dollars on race wheels, and then they want you to get a new suit, and then you just... Hell nah. Like, it adds up quick. It adds up so quick. I mean, and I'm... Yeah, having fun is cheap. Racing's expensive. Racing's... Uh, having fun is a poor man's sport. Racing is uh, not up my alley. Unless someone gives me a huge bag of cash. Yeah. But, She's open. I'm open. Hit, hit that Venmo. It's, it's on my profile. <laughs> 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 I recently put it on my profile just, just for like... Um, you know, I like take pictures at events and then just like, if, if you guys want to send me money, go for it. But like, if you don't, don't. And then I did that a couple times and it worked. And I was like, yeah, that's crazy. Like people really like my shit. Like that's cool. And so I just like left it up there to like make it easier in, in case anyone wants to send me some money, but yeah. All right. I wanted to, um, get into your Hawaii trip. Mm. you went over there pretty recently and i got a guest question to kind of get us into the conversation Ooh. from uh chris Anders. here goes wow hey dan i'm just calling to uh to ask marcella about the names and the community of chickens we had living us with us in the mud um uh, love the show thanks bye <laughs> man this feels like a trap i was uh so high the whole time that i don't remember all the chickens names but there was like there's like five of them dude i mean there's like nelly and like big nelly and little nelly and that's like all i remember um dude there's like five chickens and they were by the time i i was there for the last two weeks of you know like david and connor had been there for like two fucking months so by the time i got there these chickens had been living with them for months um, they were one with the chickens. Are we talking free range chickens? Was there a, a farm or coop anywhere near? They're just, they're just hanging out. Don't know where they came from. Mountain Maui Polies chickens, man. They were <laughs> fucking huge, fat chickens. We actually, uh, we actually, sometimes I'll see like chicken related things. Like I bought this thing that David and I saw at Goodwill and we now hang our keys on it, but it's just like a. Some, eventually you guys will see it but like it's a it's just like a chicken and it looks just like nelly and it's and it has a hook on it and we hang our keys on it now but nelly's always with us <laughs> that's awesome yeah um they ate everything if if like we left food out in the middle of the night or in the morning sometimes we'd hear them get up before us and they'd be like And you like hear them eating our chips. 
That's or, a really good chicken or, impression. Thanks. <laughs> or like our oatmeal or like just like going through coffee grounds or like trash or like they ate everything, dude. It got to the point where like we had like not leave the food out, I think. But <laughs> they were They were living good. Yeah, they would like try to get into our tents and shit. They like come up and like try to fuck with us and like one time I was like digging a hole, you know, for my poop and and one of the one of the chickens was like following me, like while I was like going to the bathroom. And I'm like, yo, this is we're not family, dude. Like get the fuck out of here. Like they were <laughs> The thing is, they didn't really branch out. They were just like, they were just like in this hole with with the boys, like living there. It was, it was weird. Certainly painting a, a good picture of the living conditions there. Um, so you're you're all in a hole. I'm presuming that's muddy with just chickens around you. So by the time I got there, I mean it started out with David and Connor which is just like two tents. And then by the time I got there, they had had multiple visitors come and go, people staying with them and then leaving. Um, We had Tarp City at one point, uh, which is like when I got there, it was fucking monsooning. And we had like had to take shelter at our friend Anthony and Clint, Clint's house. Clint, 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 Clint saved us. He was, he was a character. Um, but we like got back and it was still fucking raining on the mountain and we like had we like all went and bought as many tarps as we could and like put up these tarps i mean we really did the world dirty by not documenting oh my god i would have loved it any of this there's like i brought my camera too i don't know what i was doing honestly like i brought all my shit didn't use any of it like just walked up polies all day all the time but i've been like the documentary of the century (sighs) david there's like one picture out there that still does not do a justice but david has this one really blurry like bad picture and it's like a good picture because like we were there and we like experienced this but it doesn't make any sense it's just it was connor's christmas present it's just connor standing out in the distance of the mud which is the mud was our campsite and he's you don't see connor's face or anything but you just see connor going like this and it's just his back and around him is a sea of crap trash and beer cans and bongs and pizza boxes like (laughs) there's like five pizza boxes stacked up next to this tree tarps and tents and chase's pants are hanging on a clothesline and in the corner there's like a there's like the rim of a of chase's bike which is like a a kowalski dirt bike or whatever and it's just like ridiculous looking and you know when we left we like cleaned it up and everything it looked but i mean none of this was documented it's really crazy like what they were doing out there and i'm like really lucky that i made the jump and did that because it Obviously, if you guys know me, it changed my life. So, sea of crap and trash and m- m- mole bongs. <laughs> Sounds like a dream. It was amazing. I'd never taken so many moles in my life. I saw a video of like David uh, digging up wheels. Uh-huh. What What was the deal <laughs> with these, these wheels in the ground? This was like the second to last day or something. Um, I had just extended my flight. Um, so that we would leave on the same day. Cause like, I didn't want to go to the airport by myself. And, uh, I like see David and Clark standing over by, by our tent and, um, David's digging up wheels because they had, all of them were like burying wheels throughout the campsite on the off chance that anyone came and saw the only thing that mattered was please don't take our wheels and the wheels got buried so david was digging them up so that he could leave uh and catch a flight in like a day or two so it was like a storage scenario to hide them yeah i mean you couldn't unless you wrapped something in a tarp you couldn't really bury it was the other thing but like you could you could bury some powell peralta 72 millimeter kevo reimer wheels if you wanted to (laughs) red um yeah 
was the skating well, was the skating good or what? what was that yeah i mean we didn't when i was there we didn't have like a rental or anything um but jake kewick showed up and he showed up and saved the fucking day he showed up and and rented like a huge 15 passenger van that had no seats in it so there were some days where we were driving across the island with everyone in this van and we were skating some of the neighboring roads on maui but for the most part i just skated pulleys the whole time like hiking up pulleys by myself or with people um half of the road is closed so we could only really hike up we would like we couldn't hitchhike to the top. Most of it was hitchhiking, too. So we couldn't hitchhike to the top because there was a huge gate that was like, you know, you couldn't get past it with like a car. Um, but there was one night where we walked all the way to the top of the mountain. And I think it's like four miles or something at night. And I think for the most part, by the time I got to the top, I was sober. But then we had like smoked weed at the top and I like skate down and I couldn't see shit. Like, I had to take my glasses off because I was fogging up from breathing so hard because I'd never even skated the top section before, and the first time that I had skated it was at night. And uh, it was gruesome. I mean, that trip was not for beginners, and I had never done anything like that, but it was the time of my life. How many showers do you take? <sighs> Me? Some. <laughs> For the whole trip, like actual showers, not in the ocean, m- maybe four. Okay. But like, <laughs> but like our showers, maybe, maybe more than that. Like our showers were mostly in the ocean. And then like, you know, you could like go that's down. A, that's good. You like go down to the beach and like shower off with the thing. It's really funny though, because when I got there, um, we had gone down to like their version of like a YMCA and they had free showers and they had no idea about these showers so the boys could have been showering this whole the time. the whole time <laughs> the whole time there was like a public pool and everything and you didn't need anything to get in you could just go and they had showers and i think i went there maybe two or three times like went there on a solo mission literally i took the the scooter down from the mountain just so that i could go get a coffee and shower like that was my whole day but it took me all fucking day because i was on like a 50 cc ice bear rocket is what the bike was called (laughs) the scooter where'd you get the scooter from david bought the scooter for the trip (laughs) um and then chase had also bought a bike for the trip so we had this and then we had another scooter that was also a 50 cc different version of the ice bear rocket i mean these scooters were terrible they like barely moved up the mountain, but like they got us places sometimes. And then Spud had also bought this like monstrosity of a bike that like unfortunately never got used because I think it was like broken like the third day or something. <laughs> yeah. So there was transportation sometimes, but Chase's bike was pretty much the only bike that it was the only real transportation. That, that... thing looked like a clunker. <sighs> I'm pretty sure he bump started it every single time. Oh my gosh. And he would like bump start it on the mountain. Yeah. Just yeah. Point it downhill and, and yeah. Just... <laughs> yeah. Like that was the, I mean, we had the other scooters and they, they were like good for what they were, but Chase's bike was the only one that like had any speed or like <clears throat> kick to it. So oh my God. yeah, that thing was, that thing was dope. I love that. The mud was everything changed my life next time y'all do that bring a get the camera <sighs> press record on some stuff because i mean there is so many cool instagram clips though i was like what the hell is going on in hawaii right now y'all are like no one knows <laughs> no one knows it's all up here man it's terrible it's terrible we like we suck they suck we all suck for not documenting that i'm serious man it was fucking insane i'd never done anything like that in my life it was the first big trip i'd ever taken and it was the mud i love that that was amazing yeah i also i mean i guess we can we'll kind of shift gears and get a little bit away from the hawaii stuff we might come back um wanted to 
get into uh, Cuddle Puddle. Mm. What's going on with the Cuddle Puddle? And uh, is that still going on, or what's what's the what's the word on Cuddle Puddle? Occasionally, uh, so occasionally we'll break it out at an event, and it's not really a choice. It just kind of happens when you take MDMA with all of your closest friends who all live five minutes away from each other. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, we just, we had this, like, really, really pure MDMA uh, that, you know, was was a gift, and, you know, we all took it at GRC, and I don't know, it started with me, David, Chase, and Ashley, and we're all, like, we're all, like, walking around the campsite on the first GRC, we're like... (laughs) <laughs> we're like linked arms like falling over on each other we're like ah, i as fucking dog shit on molly and i think we just got like really tired and we like looked up at the stars and we we're like you know what we're gonna fucking lay down that's what we're gonna do we're gonna lay down and look at the stars and we laid down in this like wet ass grass and then ashley was like oh i have a blanket somewhere I gotta go find it. And, like, me and Ashley, like, stumbled across and left left them to their own. And then we came back, and there was, like, four other people with them. And we, like, laid down this blanket. And, yeah, we just, like, all laid down. And then, like, this was at, like, 9, 9 or 10 p.m. at night, by the way. Like, the night had just started. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you know. And people just started walking up to us and being like, what the fuck are y'all doing? And we're just, like, we're just laying here in a puddle, man. Like, nothing to it. And people would, like, scream at us. And they'd be like, don't run over the cuddle puddle. And we're like, what, man? Like, what are you talking about? And and eventually it just turned into, uh, I want to say, at least 20 or 30 people on the first GRC. It was big. Piled. I mean, the blanket was under three layers of people. And it started with me, Chase, and Ashley, and, and David, and we were, like, just laying there, and then it just ended up being, like, everyone in Asheville, and then some. People would come and go. People would get up sometimes. Odin was falling asleep on me. Um, <laughs> yeah, like... We were- <laughs> Sorry, Kelly. Um, yeah, I, it got to the point where there were so many people that, like... Uh, the four of us had to keep checking in on each other because we were the base layer of like three layers of people, Dan. Like it was fucked up. So like every now and then we'd be like, Chase, can you breathe over there? And be like, yeah. And then like it got to a point where like I literally could not breathe because Tyler Hunt's giraffe ass was on top of me with Odin. And I was like, (laughs) I got to get up right now, man. Like... Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Like everyone was just It's a, it's basically like a, a cuddle pond. Started off as a puddle <laughs> and a cuddle pond Turned if you will. Turned into a ocean of stupidity, man. Like it was crazy. <laughs> it was crazy. It, I think it changed a lot of people's perspective on friendship that night, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Never been done in an NBD at a skate event. I don't so. think so. Yeah, it got to the point where like people were driving around and there was, like, people, like, protecting the puddle. They would be like, don't run over the puddle! Because we were, like, in the middle of the field, like, dumbasses. You'd trip over if you... People were tripping over us. People yeah, were jumping... Yeah, you couldn't see anything. You would just hear us being, like, like, in the middle of the field. Or, like, talking or, like, laughing or screaming or something. And people would, like, walk over and be like, what the fuck? And then they'd just join us. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. Oh boy! Yeah, changed my life. Yeah, I love that campsite. I hope GRC- it happens again this year. I think it will. Pretty sure it GRC is. GRC and Bainbridge, arguably the best two campsites you could think of. Other than, I mean, Gi- I've never been to Giant's Head, but I know that shit's dope. Tepe's dope too. It's also at the bottom of the hill, but GRC campsite is just so fucking big. Campsites are important. It's too. so There's important. There's so much room. You could fit. We have food and music there. Like, it's the best campsite. It really is. No, it's the best campsite. Like. Yeah, Khalil kills it. Zach kills it. They all killed it. Like, it's the best campsite ever. Like, mm-hmm. we have everything. Like, you wouldn't, you don't, like, need to leave the campsite. I feel mm-hmm. like the fact that that f- exists as an idea is 
dangerous. Like, that's yeah. dope. I would almost go there just to camp. Like, shit. You're right next to the river. Like, yeah. You got, like, a bunch of fucking boomers playing a really bad version of Steely Dan. Horrible <laughs> renditions of cover songs. Awful. But, like, you're so destroyed that, like, it doesn't matter and it's, like, a really good time. Yeah, that, that band needs to step their shit up. Sorry. Sorry to rip on you guys, but geez, dude. Ouch, dude. Old timers are supposed to be it's okay. good. They, they, they probably don't know how to use the internet very well, so <laughs> yeah. they probably never see this. But, I mean, Cam came in hot last year with the music. I heard. Fucking, what do you mean you heard? I wasn't there. I wasn't there this year. I was at my sister's wedding. Motherfucker. That's right. Yeah, he just threw the craziest, the craziest party, man. Nice. The big hair. Yeah, this mic's, I don't know what's going on. Um, Mal hair. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, you know, I wanted to talk about women in downhill skateboarding like what's what's going on where where are we at would you say where are we at beats me man i don't know no i don't know i'm i'm uh i'm actually supposed to do a workshop somebody hit me up recently and asked asking uh julia barboza and i to go host a workshop somewhere in tennessee it's on like the other side of Tennessee. It's like six hours from here. Unfortunately, oh, it's like it's like one of the I don't fucking know where it is, but yeah. So I, you know, and then that'll be cool because the reason he hit us up is because apparently he has a lot of interest from from women who want to like learn how to downhill. So he like wants there to be like a positive presence there. Um, but I don't know. Women in downhill have come a long way. It seems like there's like a lot more girls and and people like trying to skate and like media obviously helps with that but i see like a lot of girls in like colombia and costa rica and mexico and like all of the european girls those fuckers they can do stand-ups at speed man they are so fucking good all of you people in europe are so good like women in downhill downhill has come like a really long way in terms of like just skill set alone really it's really amazing it's great to see too. I mean, I know Soldiers was particularly like event for points and stuff, but uh-huh. that was like a full. There's a good turnout. We had like seven heats or something. Yeah, I've never. I don't have much experience in racing or just like events in general, really, because that just is how my life has turned out. But that was the most women I've ever seen, ever at an event. I think was at Soldiers. And I know there's been, you know, like, if you ever go to, like, a European event, you'll see twice that many. Because that's just, like, they're born and bred there. But, yeah, I mean, there was, like, 15 of us at Soldiers, and it was really, really, really cool to, like, race a bunch of women. Yeah. Inspiring. I've never, like, raced. I mean, Barrett Barrett Junction, I was the only girl. I raced juniors. I raced against all the boys. Um... I've never raced women. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Love to see it. You know, I hope it, I hope that uh, keeps going in that direction, you know, because it's awesome to see. Yeah. You know? Hope so too. Sucks that I'm the only woman that was supposed to be able to go to the Philippines. <laughs> like that is... That's pretty wild. Yeah. The message pretty much just read like, hey, you're our alternate. Um, No one else can make it. Can you please come and i'm like no <laughs> nope. sorry no i'm just can't can't do it just like the rest of them can't do it fifteen yeah. hundred dollar ticket it's other side of the world it's, <sighs> it's crazy across, yeah it's across the ocean dude but Mm-mm. far away what do you think would make like events better like as far as like free rides or races like what is there anything you think would be like make things better or like different formats or you got any any takes on that honestly man just go to any william royce event they're all run really really well yeah u-hauls and i mean the fact that we had a u-haul and chimney is about damn the hilarious most hilarious thing i've ever been a part of that (laughs) is so funny to me like i don't know maybe some live music and snacks 
Like, yeah. You know, like something crazy. Like like Old Man Jones, the event that, you know, Evan and his parents put on. The fact that they have like snacks and beer and shit in a corner or like at the bottom. Yeah. Kind of legendary. Extremely legendary. No one's doing that really in the States like to that. At least, I mean, in, in the Southeast really like or whatever. Because every single person there at every event pretty much probably didn't even bring water. Let's be real. Or your, Only beer. <laughs> yeah. Probably didn't bring any food or any supplies because that's just like, I guess, the nature of a downhill skateboarder. Yeah, is not just taking like, care of yourself. Not taking care of yourself at all. Yeah. Or all your stuff is like somewhere at the top of the hill or somewhere way not convenient and you just didn't even think about like i probably should have put all my stuff at the bottom of the hill that so. or you're just too damn lazy because you're like trying to skate every single yeah. run yeah and you're like water it's rough out there u-haul's going up you i gotta hop in the u-haul like, yeah i'm not drinking water yeah the fact that there's like a slew of snacks water and beer i mean i don't really drink but when i go to old man jones i'm having two beers well oh, yeah it's so fucking i'm having like eight or nine <laughs> i can't i can't really drink I basically drink till it starts affecting my skating and then i go home <laughs> <laughs> all right time to go <laughs> like oh my god an hour and a half. it's like two and a half hours actually for Nashville. yeah old man jones is far great event though yeah i think i think snacks and water is like <laughs> the most basic needs are like wow that really helps things out yeah we don't really do that out here or you know like i feel like events are doing pretty good honestly like the fact that we have prizes and like u-hauls and shit like just being run better like having you know safety is, yeah is a big thing you know making sure that things like cars aren't coming up or whatever the hell like closing roads officially type type shit mm -hmm. you know like making sure everyone's safe is probably the only thing i can think of but all the events out here are up to par in my opinion like I, what do you think like i yeah i mean definitely i don't know what to add the cam's music yeah <laughs> snacks water music like definitely having other elements like you know especially if it's a closed down big road where you have the whole road it's like man yeah. really utilizing the space like yeah. is huge i think and i think even with free rides it'd be cool to have maybe some sort of as far as like skating goes some sort of objective like not necessarily a competition but maybe some some sort of element thrown in that's like wild a, card. like a sideshow kind of thing or something i don't know i i like when events have thing like the last old man jones when they have some like thaner that's only gonna last five runs and then on your fifth run oh there's a race you gotta yeah. race on them yeah i like things like that like that it that makes it fun that like pushes people out of their comfort zone makes somebody try something new and eat shit you gotta eat shit to know shit like <laughs> you do you gotta get covered in road rash to learn something new i really believe that if you're not getting covered in road rash sometimes it's like the hell are you doing race on thaners yeah incredible yeah maybe some spec i like the spec races on mids wheels i like that like yeah that's cool I'd, I'd like to see more than that more of that yeah some funny stuff well i got a few questions i, I posted actually one of these on the instagram okay. i wanted to ask you about roads like if you were going to build the ultimate downhill run using existing roads like what roads would you mash together to create like your dream run honestly i ain't really been around the world to know these things but <sighs> and would it be grc into elk <laughs> <laughs> No, that would be exhausting. <laughs> Could you imagine awful. tucking down elk and then you have to do like 25 slides? It would be awful. It'd be, be torture. Awful. I barely can <laughs> tuck down elk the full thing anymore anyways. I'm like, and I got like you and Tyler on my ass and I'm like, Jesus Christ, what do I do? I got to get back into tuck shape. I, 
I was there like four days ago. Tucking's hard. It was awful. Tucking is hard. Tucking sucks, dude. It sucks. You know what requires tucking? Racing. Yeah. You know what doesn't? Fun. Yeah. You know what you're doing when you're having fun? Slides. Yeah. 90 blast. Um, Honestly, man. I would take all the roads in, and by say all, I mean like, there's three, uh, shitty, um, sucky, and son of sucky, and just combine all of them. You don't think that's going to hurt your legs? Of course it's going to hurt your legs, but... I would need to take a break. (laughs) I would take a break like twice down that. You ever take breaks down the hill? It's dope. You ever take breaks down like 151? Yeah, stop at the waterfall. Yeah, you stop at the waterfall. Yeah, Sometimes that's... people stop on on shitty, like at the big right or something. But um, dude, you're perfect. All of our runs are so. I'm I'm really thinking inside the box here. You know, I don't. I mean, the sucky shitty son of sucky would be. That'd be recklessly, insanely long. Shitty is already so. Long. Your wheels would be. You might not. Fucked. You wouldn't have wheels. Son of sucky would have to be the last. Yeah, that'd be like the the ender. Son of Sucky at the top, and then you have to make it down shitty and sucky. Um, <laughs> on like bricked wheels. Honestly, this is a hard question, man. Uh, this is a good one. It's a really good one. I. Uh, that's I, I like your answer. I mean, that's for me, because I I th- I had in mind my legs are gonna get torched. Okay. I was thinking paradise. Mm. stacked on each other but the bottom section is an exact replica at the top just every corner is flipped you know what i mean you know what's crazy about that all right so you told me about the stickers on my car Mm -hmm. the sticker on my old board before this one uh was paradise like i had drawn out paradise but it was mirrored Mm -hmm. because the way that i had to do it i couldn't do it on the grip tape side going from top to bottom i had to turn it around because i couldn't cut from the grip tape i had to cut from the back side because it was easier from top to bottom so all the corners are opposite on my other board really yeah and people are like what road is that i'm like it's it's dice and they're like no it's not that's not the first corner i'm like yeah it is it's just like backwards it's just like a right turn instead of a left That'd be perfect for me. Two miles, two and a half, maybe whatever length. But Malibu Mile at the bottom. <laughs> oh fuck that! Of paradise. <laughs> I'm full of bad ideas. Uh, this is, it's, it's like unenjoyable. So sorry that this is in your segment right now. <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck! I wanted to uh, also ask you, ultimate downhill skater. Let's say you're going to use existing <sighs> skaters' skills. And you had to build out someone. Who would you who would you pick? Like who's toe side? Who's heel side? Who's uh switch skating skills? What else I got? I got a few of these. Whose tuck would you have? Whose carving abilities? And then finally, uh who's uh partying skills? Alright, I have a really small brain. So start uh, one, one. Okay, by first one. one toe side. Like stand up? Yeah. Or puck down, does it? Whatever. Just doesn't matter. Whatever you. Pat Dort. Yep. Toe side stand up. What about heel side? Cam Steger. Scow. For sure. Switch? Um, I've never met this person, Um, but Antonio in California. I've seen him on Instagram. That dude rips. He's doing some of the craziest switch toe sides and switch skating. I guess I don't know how good he is at like full switch skating. I would say full switch skating. Probably David. Honestly, but if it came to like doing slides and stuff, uh if I had to like break it up from like full runs switch skating to like doing stand-ups, probably Antonio. I've never met him, but I've I'm seeing all these clips. He's like He's like really up there right now. It's fucking crazy. Who's whose tuck abilities would you want? 
Will Royce's Brazilian talk down <laughs> soldiers or Tim Dell's talk down soldiers. Absolutely. Have you seen that shit? Will's? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's like grabs the He's front like, of his board. <laughs> yeah, that's what I want. I want to be able to do that going 60. It works. Yeah, he wins. What about carving? Who's uh, carves? Who carves? I mean, I got a, I got a few in mind. I don't fucking... I would pick if I had to pick carves. I would pick Bailey Weinkoff. Aww. He's got a he's got a nice carve. He's good at carving. Is that like your version of saying he has a nice butt? Yeah, yeah. I guess you could say that. <laughs> I never thought about it like that, but yeah. Um, carving. I'm trying to like picture who I skate behind because like I don't I don't really watch videos of skaters. Sorry guys. I just it's. I have a short attention span or something. It's like, I, I never, I didn't grow up watching skate videos like a lot of people because I didn't know about downhill. Um, do you even know who Arian Chamismani is? Yeah. Yeah, his carve. Loaded Otang OG. OG. Like, Freaking OG. Like 15 years ago. That dude's my dad. <laughs> that dude taught me how to slide. Yeah. His carve. He's he like it'll he'll make it look like he's about to slide and then he never does. Fucking insane, honestly. That's a great pick. Yeah. Whose partying skills would you want? <laughs> this is just a fun one. I just want I was just wondering what you'd say. I'm trying to think of the last person who did a keg stand. <laughs> hmm. Can't remember. Usually, when keg stands start happening, I'm, I'm like blasted, blasted, blasted. Honestly, I'm sorry, dude. William Royce. Okay. When Will okay. is hammered, dude, he is the most fun person on the fucking planet. <laughs> he sings Creed. Oh yeah. What more could you have? What else? Oh, God. Crayshon. Is that the other song he sings? Yeah. <laughs> Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, Will. That's when you know the party is really turning up. Yeah, when Will is hammered and and screaming into a microphone, I want his confidence every day. <laughs> Absolutely. And or or Juan Pablo. Mm. He yeah. will outdrink us all till the day we die. Like he's amazing. Uh He's really good at partying. I mean, when we were at the New Year's party, uh, there's like, I don't know, 10 of us left. It's like 4 a.m. And there's still like a big fire going and we're all just like kind of chilling. And JP gets up out of nowhere and he just starts like kicking beer cans at everyone. He's like, get up, you motherfuckers. You don't know how to party anymore. All you people, you don't know how to party. Just starts screaming at us and all of us are just laughing. Like, this is incredible. Like, JP knows how to party and he knows how to, like, get people to fucking get out of their... Com- He'll push you into the oh, fire, yeah. but, like, with love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I love that. Yeah. Great. Great talk. Bad at questions. No, no, you're... That was That was incredible. <laughs> Well, you have you have a interesting pet. Uh huh. Here you got a you got a ferret. Uh huh. He's stinky. How, where do you? Where the hell do you get a ferret? Petco. You can just b- go buy a <laughs> ferret. I could go buy a ferret right now. Yeah, if they have them, they're so expensive now. When I got my ferret uh, at the time, I had two. When I got my ferrets, they were two hundred each. Um, they're now like four or five hundred each. Mm. But I think that's because of COVID because people were like buying pets and they like, mm. they're like buying pets for COVID and like going outdoors and like doing all this shit. So like they've doubled at least in price. It's crazy. I got a little uh, guest question. Man, I'm asking one. about your crazy ferrets. This one's from uh, Ashley Weinkoff. Here goes. Hey, Marcella. Got a couple questions for you. Um, what is your pastry? I'd love to know. 
And is your ferret goofy or regular? I fuck with you. Fuck with you, Ashley. Bye. God, I love her. She's my soulmate in another life, I think. Aww. Um. Small brain. Uh, goofy or regular? Goofy. He... <sighs> If you ever want something to do when you're high, just look up, like, try to look up, I've never even tried this, but try to look up a video of, like, a ferret going poop or something. They do this crazy thing where they, like, they, like, back up into the litter box, and they are really good at going backwards. This um, thing is pooping in a litter box like a cat? Yeah, he's potty trained. Oh, wow. He's been potty trained ever since. I mean, I I potty trained him. They're smart, so if you take care of them. What's its name? Meliotis. Meliotis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's supposed to be the king of the seven deadly sins is, is what we named him at the time. Okay. He's the king. Okay. Uh, right now, uh, in in our new apartment, uh, Meliotis, is his, he has his own room. And he like free roams in the room or whatever, and uh, in this room is a bunch of Horcruxes. You know what a Horcrux is? Um, remind me. Harry Potter. It's like a. Piece oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a piece of someone's uh, soul or whatever. Um, don't quote me on that. I haven't watched Harry Potter in a long time. Okay, so some Harry Potter stuff going on. So in this room, David specifically, because you know loves everyone so deeply um in this room is like a bunch of horcruxes like things from people that he's like collected um like it's, uh, it's like pictures of people or like there's one thing in there we have three pieces of gum from odin odin gave david for his birthday three pieces of gum like chewed no. Okay. okay. <laughs> They're like in the wrapper. It literally is just trash, but it's just like, you know, these things that like he holds close to him. Um, wow. Yeah. There's like this other thing that like uh, Clark either found or made that says like Cine dust on it. There's like a picture of like him and his brother. There's like uh, <laughs> we have the the poop shovel from Maui hung up in the wall on there. Um, and attached to that is pieces of Chase's pants. Um. Horcruxes, and they're all hung up in Meliodas's room, and he's guarding them. It's super weird. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry, guys. You guys will eventually see it when we, uh, honestly, we'll probably have people over pretty soon. We're pretty moved in these days, but yeah, the Horcrux room is pretty funny. It's Meliodas's room. The bed is on the floor. Oh my gosh. Uh, yeah. It's awesome. It's pretty crazy in there. I don't even... What was her other question? Oh, uh, what's your pastry? <sighs> Does someone have a turnover? Is that a pastry? What's a turnover? It's made out of puff pastry, actually. Really? Mm -hmm. I don't even know. I, no, Definitely no one has that. A turnover is the triangle thing that it, it's puff pastry, so it kind of tastes like a croissant. Okay. Um. Uh, that's... In my head, that's like really gay. Now that I've said that out loud, um, <laughs> um, it's it's a tri it's a triangle and it's puff pastry and inside of this is like usually an apple filling or cherry filling or something crazy, and then like on top of it is like raw sugar that's like been that's been like burned. What would your filling be? Probably just like a classic apple, honestly. Apple pie. Such shit's so good. Okay. We actually, I actually just stole four turnovers from Whole Foods the other day. Uh oh. Oh, fuck Jeffrey Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what they're there for. Yeah, man. Give me free food. Yeah. Uh, You guys can steal from Whole Foods on Merriman, by the way. You're allowed to. You absolutely can. They will not stop you. I do condone this. Only steal from big companies. Yeah. Love it. <laughs> yeah. I think it's a turnover. If no one has turnover. You definitely got it. You're. I, that's crazy. We got it on record. I, I think it's. I don't think anyone is picking that I, besides I you. I don't, and it's like an actual pastry. I know a lot of people have pastries, but they're like donuts. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, I fucking love turnovers. They're so good. 
Um, you kind of you kind of talked about Ari earlier. About what? Is his name Ari? Ari? Ari. Ari. Yeah, Ari. Ari. Arian. Who's like who's your OGs? He's he's one of your OGs. Who's who else would you say is like one of your your there's OGs? Like, there's like five. No, there's more than that. Um, Ari. Uh, is the is the the dude has been who's been running Gel Lab for 13 years now, which is just like uh, garage sessions in downtown LA. It's the most roots fucking thing on the planet. Um, John Bailey, who was the owner of Ojun Pucks, also taught me how to slide. Uh, he doesn't make pucks anymore, obviously, but um, yeah, he taught me how to slide. Nick Lee, who nobody really knows about but he was running remember collective for a long time um tim dell daniel angle grayson Bagellini. he'll probably never see this but uh he used to skate a lot and uh honestly rachel like i've known rachel for like i've known rachel since i was like 16 so and she she was like my image of downhill skateboarding at the time for women i didn't know what it was she was very close to ari so she was like she was like my i was like damn girls do this crazy and you know she she's badass she traveled to travel the world and shit so yeah those are my ogs right on yeah they all some serious ogs in there they <laughs> they really oh and Zach Keller. I've known Zach Keller for a really long time. He's been very adjacent in my life. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, I think the first time I met Zach, he was like 18 or 19. And I'm like how, 15, 16. And, you know, him, Khalil, Dusty, and like all those skate house dudes were like, you know, skating tuna and like coming down tuna. And like I'd always see them around and... I've definitely had had conversations with him, but I didn't really know him until, like, he moved here and uh, didn't realize how long I've known him. So, yeah. Zach, you're my OG. <laughs> yeah. You heard it here. <laughs> um, What's your, what's kind of your plans for this year? You got any trips coming up or? Yeah, Puerto Rico in February. Everyone and their grandmother is going to be there. I'll be there. I'm going. I know. I'm so excited. Are you bringing Mal? Uh, she's no. She's. Fuck. I know. I wanted her to come. But Damn it. Yeah, everyone's gonna be there, man. It's gonna be. I'm so glad you're coming. It's. How long are you gonna be there? I'll be there for a week. Nice. Doing a week. So. <clears throat> um. Yeah, Puerto Rico for two and a half weeks. Um. It's the only thing that I actually have planned, but I really think that I want to go to Colombia th- this year. And that's all I really want to do. But like, you know, things come up, you know, I didn't know that I was going to go to Vancouver last, last year. Um, sorry, I've been drinking coffee, so it's got acid in it. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, nothing's really planned except for Puerto Rico, but I, I think I really want to go to Colombia and you know, skate with like Sierra Lee and and all of them, and probably get some dental work done while I'm out. I hear there. it's I heard it's a hot spot to go get dental work. Yeah, JP's mom's cousin. Oh, we got to connect. Cool. Yeah. I should have gone down there last year. I like I ran up a check. Yeah. Well, it got saucy in here. That was your. Oh, the the sun is behind a cloud. I was like, are we getting a power surge right <laughs> no, now? No, no, okay. Just, the sun's behind a cloud. It's. <laughs> over yonder wow um, that was cool that was pretty awesome columbia and it's meant to be yeah <laughs> um yeah that's about it i don't that's that's all i really want to do but shit happens honestly probably just another u.s freaking southeast tour man last year we david and i we went to all the virginia we spent two weeks driving around in virginia just we went to bug knob and uh what was the other reddish one? Went to Reddish. Um, yeah, we just went to a bunch of events on the on this side of the U.S. and it was like really really dope. That's kind of where I'm looking like my trajectory this yeah. year. Looks like there's a lot going on. I'm like, there's been a lot going on. GRC, dude. I take a week off for GRC. I live here. 
Yeah. But everyone is here, and I'm like, I'm trying to skate with all of you guys, mm-hmm. like everyone. But let's blow Asheville while this happens. That's like what happens. <laughs> so funny. Beautiful. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to Puerto Rico with the with the squad here. Have you been? No. Me neither, man. You don't no. need a passport either. Don't need a passport. I mean, I have one, but you don't need one. It's a U.S. territory. Uh huh. Which I that's that was like my passport. <laughs> Uh, lapsed. I need to get that re up on that. But yeah. when I found out, I'm like, oh shit, it's U.S. territory. I'm you don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> yeah, I got a passport specifically for Vancouver last year. But also, like, I'm trying to leave the country, man. Like, yeah, I'm trying to see some shit. So. Yeah, I've heard from someone like it's not a vacation unless you're using a passport or something like that. Yeah, or unless you like go to a country and they don't speak English. You know, like you gotta you gotta see some shit to know some shit, but. Puerto Rico is going to be so fun. I mean, there's going to be so many people there. There's, I don't know how many of us from around here. The The Asheville <gasps> bubble is going to be like... The Asheville bubble alone. People from California, people from Canada, people from all over that like we all know are going to blow this shit up with them. So stoked. Yeah. What What's uh What's your setup? What are you, what are you rocking over here? What do we, what do we got? Well, this is a... Uh, some some Valkyrie. Uh, I recently started riding. Uh, I was on a split setup for a long time um, because these trucks, not these this set, but these trucks were originally gifted to me because I had been on Lux trucks for the past like six and a half years. Oh my god! Do you, do you even know what those are? Yeah. They have a diamond bushing seat. <laughs> They're awful, awful. Lux trucks are awful. Heard it here. Yeah, um, I can't believe you. <laughs> Yeah, I skated every road in Asheville on those. 50 or 180s, 50-50, awful. Um, but then I went to a split setup. But now I've recently been doing um, symmetrical, which has been really fun, 145 to 155. Um, these are the bushings I used from Ohio. I haven't changed them because they're really sturdy. So, uh, And then this, the Lisa Peters Pro Model uh I don't think this is the one that he that he's selling, but it's pretty much the same thing. But Pantheon, Lisa Peters bought Pro Model. It has a small kicktail on it. Really, really fun to ride. Is that is that board on the market? I think so. I think he's selling it, but I I, I could be wrong. It's like a when I was talking to Jeff. Um, I know me and like a lot of other people really wanted him to make a mini Gaia. The Gaia is such a great board. Too mm-hmm. big for me, though. It's like, it's just long. Pretty big board. It's a big board. So I think that this is this is like his his slight version of that because I really just wanted him to make like a, a, a board with a smaller board, you know, for someone my height, like uh, with a kicktail. And this thing has been really fun for free ride and for downhill. I absolutely love this board. Right on. Yeah. You rocking seismic wheels normally? What's your... No, nah, these are my elk wheels. Those are elk wheels? Okay. Yeah, these are actually my Ohio race wheels. I have like <laughs> seven sets left over from this one race. But um, these are the only reason I can keep up with you guys is these wheels. Yeah. Normally, it's just like, you know, snakes or whatever because we I like to do slides. But lately, I've been skating elk once every three weeks because it's 30 degrees out. Yeah. Awful. It's just not really fun when you're frozen solid at the bottom but you still can do it you can do it but it's just like i've noticed with downhill you don't really uh (coughs) that was disgusting i am so sorry um with downhill man you like don't you don't warm up no you just drop you just drop and you're cold the whole time and then you're stiff because you're cold and then if you layer up you're still cold because you're stiff and it's like it's hard, so I've just been having these elk wheels on. Um, that or like a rain setup. We've been skating Town Mountain in the rain lately. It seems like the new hot. You hot, have uh, to come. I will. I will. One of these you times. You have to come. I'm jealous. I like wake up and I'm like, fuck. I should have gone. We skate. At Connor O'Brien, as he says, smiles for miles. Okay, it is the longest, most boring downhill run on the planet. But if you skate it in the rain with 15 of your favorite people. It's so fun. Are y'all starting from Sunset Summit from the top and then go on the town and then go down Old Toll? No. So we start from the top 
And then instead of going down the side that you normally go down with like the the yield sign or whatever when you turn left, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. You go down the other side. Okay. And you go down that and that's like boring, mm-hmm. and long and kind of flat, but you like still roll down it, down it going 15 and then when you get to that intersection that we usually blow with some spotters, um <laughs> uh you turn right. Okay. And yeah. you go down that and then that takes you Does it go uphill for a second? Is that the way? It does. It ben- it eventually Bentry. after like a mile, it'll like go uphill and you have you have to push at least two times. Okay. Like like in a section. There's like at least two to three sections where you have to push uphill for a little bit. Yep, I know what you're talking about. And yeah. that shit makes you warm. It's dope. Yeah. And then eventually it connects to old toll and then you skate old toll and uh it's so fun. It takes you like 30 minutes to go down (laughs) like 45 minutes and we stopped having people drive down behind us because every time we would like all be talking we're like damn really feel bad for whoever's driving right now this is the most boring shit on the planet so we started doing party laps and leaving cars at sunset park and shit and uh i gotta get in on this yeah yeah the rain is cold now dan (laughs) it's like really miserable out there um it was really fun like a month ago. I don't I don't know how how much people are trying to do it now, honestly. But you have to come. It's so fun. I will I'll text you when it happens. Yeah, holler at me. <sighs> yeah. Um What do you think's gonna be the trend this year? Downhill trend. What what's gonna be the Do you got any thoughts on Free rides. Free rides. Because uh, uh, I feel like racing has just been like a shit show for the past few years. Yeah. And I feel like there's going to be a lot more people on single kicks yep. or on double kicks. I'm trying to see some double kicks out there. Yeah. Like I'm trying to see more people <laughs> doing some crazy shit. I'm trying to do more crazy shit. Like I want everyone to put on some Paris 180 50 fifties and pasters and like do some one eighties and shit. Like I, I feel like the trend this year will be and should be a free ride. Oh yeah. Honestly. Like Yeah, I mean I got I got a I got a David Boyd setup, symmetrical trucks. Aw. Like Yeah. Dude. Powell's. Let's go. I'd say bring that thing rain skating, but uh That would be my rain skateboard hunt. Oh, I don't want to get it wet though. The thing is those boards do not do well. In the wet. Oh, no. No, they don't. They're not. I don't know what it is about uh, the, the, the rocket longboards delamming in the wet. Ask David. They're, it, it, it happens, though. Mm. Um, yeah. Yeah, I need to set up my old seed because the seed is fucking f- that moonshine China waterproof shit. Mm-hmm. And I'm trying to set that up and have that actually like have a rain set up. I've never rain skated until four months ago it's so fun it's so good for your soul man just like i'll, when, li- I'll come link up with y'all i will yeah you have to but i think the trend should should be uh should be free riding yeah it should be like like antonio putting out the longest switch toes that i've ever seen on video like it should be that shit like yeah. not this try hard tucking shit like people having it's, fun yeah no i agree i love yeah, that it's so awesome well I think I think we're about there. That's um, crazy. This this has been a great great uh, journey. Thank you. That's th- that we've talked about. So gay. We've <laughs> <laughs> we got we've got through some pretty pretty rad topics. Was there um, anything you wanted to end with or bring up that we might have missed or? Any? Oh man! Shout out Mama. That's about it. Right on. And shout out APB and NCDH for fucking having me because like. Yeah, like Asheville changed my life. And honestly, you know, I I missed I missed the train like a lot of people who moved. You know, I only moved here 3 years ago, but and I I missed the uh the downhill train. You know, I wish I moved here when I was 18 and not fucking Chapel Hill, but the fact that the community has accepted me and like everyone who lives here has been a, a blessing and I feel like it's it's going to get really big. And then crash. (laughs) 
<laughs> but like with love um you know but yeah just like shout out fucking everyone who lives here all all my friends i fucking love everyone who lives here everyone has like really I feel like i've really blossomed in my 20s here it's been a fucking blessing yeah that means you dude because you've been here you're an og you've been here i think like bailey's an og like i might be i might be an og in like two years I'd say Bailey's OG. Bailey's OG. He's, There's a lot of OGs. He's though. OG. Yeah. I'm like I'm like OG Junior. OG OG J. <laughs> <laughs> Jr. OG dude. Yeah. Just shout out everyone, dude. Fucking shit's dope. Yeah. Right on. Well, I appreciate you coming on. Thanks. Thanks for fucking having me. This has been super fun. That's ridiculous. Are you okay? Um. I don't know yet. That's okay. Drink a beer about it. Yeah, I'm going to have to. <laughs> you got to cure the hangover somehow. All right, folks. Well, if you're still out there, thanks for listening. If you're not, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you.